Good day and welcome to another B2B exclusive. Our guest today is Jamie McIntosh, President and Chief Executive Officer at Greycliff Exploration. Greycliff trades on the CSE under the ticker G-R-A-Y and over the counter symbol G-R-Y-C-F. Good morning, Jamie. Thank you for joining us on B2B interviews. Hey, Todd. Welcome to be here. Jamie, I thought you might begin with a brief introduction and overview of the company's projects and present operations. Yeah, so we, uh, we're a fairly nascent company. We went public uh, a year ago in August, and we have two projects. Our, our original or initial project, the Shakespeare Gold Project, is exploring for high-grade gold in the shadow of a historical head frame. And uh, more recently, we picked up the Baldwin Project which uh, we believe has very similar geology to the Shakespeare project and is within driving distance of Shakespeare. Well, this is certainly an exciting time for the company. Expand a bit more, if you would, on these core projects and give us a better sense for where you are today in terms of exploration, studies, drilling, resources, etc. So the, the main project, the Shakespeare project and the Baldwin project, which is located to the slightly to the southwest of it, are both located about 80 kilometers west of Sudbury. It's uh, very exciting. You can drive to it on the Trans-Canada and then it's a simple ex less than 10K drive in from the Trans-Canada, which means we have water and power at site. The Shakespeare property is uh, 1,025 hectares of contiguous prospective ground that includes one crown patented lease and two crown leases and about 40, uh, over 40 mineral claims. The Shakespeare, what we went after it because it was a brownfield site. There was a mine in operation for four years. They mined it by hand and they produced 2,900 ounces of gold from six underground areas, um, all extremely high grade. So we've done a bunch of work in that area. We continue to uh, drill. And as a matter of fact, we put a drill result out this morning uh, from hole nine. And in that, we talked about the fact that the uh, cross section that we showed in the press release this morning was 50 meters wide and covered off not only some drilling that we did in 2020, but also uh, the hole eight and hole nine from 2021. So we've now completed uh, an extensive amount of drilling in that area. And you know, when you look at these, uh, you can see that most of the new holes we're finding are below the old workings from the original mine. Um, one of the things that we really like about it is that we're getting solid widths. So in drill hole nine, uh, we had 16 meters of uh, an average of over 13 grams per ton. Um, you know, that did include some sections that were quite significant and in, including uh, 0.6 of a meter of 267 grams. And, and one of the things I really quite impressed is we continue to find new areas of gold in and around the shadow of the original head frame. We've now completed over 2000 meters of drilling in phase two, and we're now dr beginning drilling on phase three. So We've got a lot more work to do. We've got a lot of assays at the lab. And uh, we're quite encouraged by the fact that you've got extended areas of mineralization with strong grades throughout the, uh, the drilling we found. Um, a lot of the core we're seeing in phase two looks very similar. Uh, and that's extremely encouraging. And the higher grade zone, mineralized zones, are flanked by lower grades that we will end up if you know, in the future, uh, it will be a potential mining scenario. Uh, that stuff will all be taken out, which is why we're quite comfortable talking about the fact that it's a 16 meter wide section. Last year, when we originally started, it looked like two zones. It now looks like one continuous zone. So there's a lot of work to be done. Um, some of the numbers we got in last year's drilling, uh, which was about 1300 meters over seven holes, uh, we had some 5.5 grams um, and uh, over, over 4.6 meters. We had 5.4 grams over five meters. We had 8.6 grams over five meters. So we're getting very continuous uh, and regular mineralization throughout this area. As I mentioned before, in hole eight, we had 
we also had good results, very similar to hole nine, 16 meters of 16.4 grams at a depth of 89 meters. So we're getting um, some, some pretty spectacular results. Um, and it's now on the cross sections, uh, it's in excess of 50 meters wide. So we have more work to do. Uh, by the time we're completed phase uh, three, uh, we'll have close to 5,000 meters of drilling. And most of those holes are in the 150 to 200 meters length. But we're also uh, planning, and we've, we've talked about this before, but there is an issue right now, as everyone knows, with uh, getting people. Um, and so we're waiting right now for an airborne geophysical study. We're also doing line cutting to do ground IP. We believe that this work combined with the field sampling we're doing uh, will identify some new exploration targets along the identified gold horizon, which runs north, south, uh, northwest, southeast. So we're pretty excited. Indeed. Well, this is certainly very intriguing, and it seems as though the company is certainly well positioned in terms of infrastructure. How is the company, in fact, positioned in terms of strategic or joint venture partners, and will you look to M&A activities moving forward in the near to midterm? Most likely not. We're still extremely well funded, um, and we have enough money to complete the 2022 exploration program. Um, however, as always, uh, having been in the business for 35 years, if someone were to come knocking on the door and say, we've got an incredible opportunity for you, I'm always, my, my ears are always open and I'm always willing to listen to any proposal. And, and you know, the, the reality is we have the potential to come out with at some point in, at the end of phase three drilling, uh, a maiden resource on this uh, deposit. It's never actually had a resource. Um, when they originally, uh, we call the shaft, the Miller shaft, when Miller found the original prospect, it was, it is historically reported to be $5,000 a ton, which meant at $20 an ounce, it was an extremely high grade piece of ore. And they literally sank the shaft right there and followed the vein. And so they never really uh, created a resource. They just followed the high-grade gold vein down at depth and across some of the adits. So we're, we're quite excited about the uh, prospect of not only completing this 3D model, which is underway, um, but also uh, potentially generating a maiden resource. So, Jamie, what is it then that is so unique about Greycliff exploration? What is it that will define and differentiate this company from others in the industry? So I think the, the real things that make us stand apart, uh, we're exploring for high grade gold where we already know there's gold um, in the shadow of historical head frame. Um, we've got an extremely good team. Uh, we have Don McKinnon Jr. Um, and of course everyone is aware of Don McKinnon Sr.'s uh, expertise. We also have as our QP, Bruce Durham, uh, another uh, very, very important person in the Hemlo Gold story. Um, and as you know, uh, certainly for, for those who don't know, Hemlo is three gold mines that have produced over 26 million ounces. And it was Don McKinnon Sr. and one of his geologists, Bruce Durham, uh, that were worked with that team to uh, help discover and uh, progress that deposit, those deposits. Um, so we have, a, we have a management team with deep experience. Um, I've got 35 years, I, I worked in the field. Um, I worked as a mining analyst. Um, we've got an excellent technical team. A lot of our um, geologists and drillers are actually shareholders, which I think really, really sets us apart. We have a tight capital structure. We've got 25 million shares out and between management insiders and strategic shareholders, that probably covers about 40% of that 25 million. So it's, it's an interesting combo. We've got a second project, uh, which is always good, which is, was originally ex, uh, only explored for uranium and the drill core, uh, the historical drill core uh, results uh, look very similar to some of the ore we have on, on Shakespeare. So the Baldwin project, we have a lot of work to do. 
but we're quite excited. So we potentially, if we're if things continue to go well, uh, could have the makings of a new Ontario Gold Camp. So briefly in closing, let's recap, if you would leave us with a few quick bullets here. Why should investors consider a long-term position in Greycliff exploration? I think we're, we're like a lot of uh, juniors right now, we're highly under, uh, undervalued. I think, uh, you know, the last financing we did was at 50 and then at 60. Um, and we certainly won't be doing any new financings until we're well in excess of 75, or we hope not to have to do it till we're up, back up to around 75 or 80 cents. And we've got some, an excellent stream coming for the next three months of drill results. And uh, on top of that, we'll have the results of the 3D modeling, the airborne geophysics, the ground geophysics, uh, further sampling. And I believe we'll find uh, numerous targets on the, to the north, uh, west and to the southeast of the shaft where we're currently exploring. So we have in, in total uh, with the Baldwin and Shakespeare, um, we have uh, basically 2,500 hectares and it's all very prospective ground. Well, that is certainly a very exciting story. Jamie, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you for joining us on B2B Interviews. Thank you very much, Todd. I appreciate the time. Our guest today has been Jamie McIntosh, President and Chief Executive Officer at Greycliff Exploration. Greycliff trades on the CSE under the ticker GRAY and over the counter symbol GRYCF.